okay? Can you hear me? I think normally I'm quite loud. So, okay, first of all, uh, indeed, I would like to thank the organizer for the kind invitation and assembling this uh, nice school and workshop. So, just to set the framework, so this is the title of my talk, so it will be, again, quantum simulation, preferably with uh, ultra-cold atoms, but, okay, many of these ideas are, can be applied also to other systems, for example, photons. And I'll, uh, as in the school, I will try to, to introduce briefly what does it mean, this synthetic of study strip, or a synthetic lattice, and start to really from a, from the beginning. So the plan would be just a few words about uh, integer quantum wall system, although we have a very nice talk by Fabrice and also by, by Michael on a topological aspect. Then I will uh, go to a possible realization of this kind of system that is especially suitable for seeing uh, edge state, that is uh, this synthetic lattice. They use this idea of extra dimension, so using internal degree of freedom as uh, site of uh, an additional auxiliary dimension, and then I will, I will uh, jump to a newer result, and we will show that this narrow system not only have, uh, have a state, but have also some memory of the topology of the bulk, although it seems paradoxical because the bulk can be reduced even to just one site. And then from this, I will go to the interaction, because this kind of system are very promising for considering interacting system, and although they are very deduced, they have already some interesting feature that uh, have some connection with the larger system, and I will go through, review a bit this idea of Meissner, this analogy of Meissner vortex phase transition in ladder, and then I will explain to you what we are working on now, that is to see what is the effect of demerization in this kind of system, and uh, we have quite some, uh, start seeing quite some nice effect. Okay, as I told you, this is, uh, so, all, all effect we know, just uh, Lorentz force, quantum wall is much more interesting, because it was quite surprising to observe this precise quantized conductance. And okay, this, there are still some mystery of the, when there are interaction with the fractional uh, plateau, but the integer one uh, are well understood. Here we'll, uh, we'll focus mainly on the lattice case that is in the one discussed by, by Fabrice. And essentially, we see that uh, the effect of the, of the magnetic field reduced really in having this complex tunneling that is just due to the fact that we have a uh, a magnetic field that induces some Arnold boom effect. While this, uh, this model is so nice, because somehow it's a paradigmatic example of a topological insulator, so in a rough uh, word that is a topological insulator, it's a system that would be uh, an insulator in the bulk, but is conducting to the edge. So how we can understand it? So semi-classically, if we have a very strong magnetic field that is implemented by the flux, the, the electron would be just confined in a closed sequence control orbit, so this justifies the fact that the, the system becomes uh, insulating. But actually, there are some surprises when we go at the quantum level, because first of all, we see that appear this very nice uh, fractal structure, and this is associated to topological property of the system. This means that for each of these bands, when there is the gap, we can associate a topological quantity that is the Chern number, and we had the, Michael introduced in his talk, but essentially, roughly speaking, the Chern number is like now having curvature in the, in the brilliant zone, so having curvature in momentum, a magnetic flux in momentum, and this implies that, okay, when we put now, if we put some boundary in our system, even semi-classically, we understand that this cyclotron orbit, when they hit the, the, the boundary, cannot close the orbit, so we have this keeping orbit that produces some current. But now, due to the, the presence of the, of the chart, this current is, is quantized. And, and actually, this is the, what is responsible of this uh, quantized quantizance. And what are these states that appear here, that are confined here, and are robust, are exactly the such states. So, we want to see this edge state, because they are nice and interesting. So we, we know that, okay, we needed this magnetic flux, the lattice, and also a sharp boundary. Okay, so, as Fabrice say, lattice is obvious. We can do optical lattice very well, and we can load BC, for instance, on a, 
uh, the general gas in, uh, in our uh, favorite lattice. Now there is this problem of overcome. In a sense, the atoms are neutral, but we want to have them uh, behaving as uh, charge in a, magnetic, in a magnetic field. So what we need is to engineer some uh, synthetic current of boom effect. So they should acquire some, uh, some phase when they tunnel. And as we said, there are very ingenious ways for, uh, for doing it. And here we'll, just by reason of time, I can just confine to, to one specific one, that is this one that used this ingredient, extra dimension plus Lyman laser, somehow can be seen as an evolution of this uh, seminal proposal by Chaskin Soller of uh, about uh, 15 years ago. OK, so first of all, extra dimension, very briefly. So we have seen in, uh, also in uh, Christian uh, talk that uh, we can have uh, easily 1D, 2D, 3D lattice and realize a bar model, the one uh, considered also by Luca in, in this talk. And I say, now the question here we posed some time ago was, OK, can we do 4D now? Can we do a 4D lattice? But in principle, one would say no, but actually dimensionality in the lattice is connectivity. So what we need really to provide the, the sufficient number of neighbors. So to understand this, how we can do it? Suppose that this is uh, our uh, represent with this cubic lattice, uh, generic hypercube one. So you see, you have this hypercube, you can always mentally think of distinguish the, the layer in uh, the plane, in this case, a different <coughs> color. But now, equivalently, you may think that you have a system that lives in the plane, where, but there are some internal degree of freedom, some uh, hyperfine state of the atom, spin state, but also other stuff. So getting a, the, you get back the, the original system, you are able just to couple coherently this, uh, this uh, internal degree of freedom. So obviously, this is by far not restricted to the speed state of the atom. It can be anything. It can be even momentum state of the atom, trap uh, mode in the trap. But also, not can be not just atoms, cold molecule, photonic crystal, real resonator, and the list is uh, is very huge. I cannot put even reference because it's it's not fitting. So this was uh, was very nice, but uh, okay. After some time, and already this is quite some time ago, we realized that. The same system could be used to get uh, to realize easily this uh, this quantum hole strip we and uh, this soft other strip we were saying at the beginning. So now it's uh, even more basic. Suppose you have some atom that have some internal degree of freedom, and you have you put a spin independent what the spin independent lattice. So if you do nothing, you have just three copies in this case of a one D lattice, quite boring. But now if you shine with some uh, Raman, Raman coupling that is used a, a radio oscillation between these states, you see that automatically you induce the tunneling in this uh, extra dimension or synthetic dimension. And this tunneling at the same time is complex due to the momentum kick uh, transfer by the Raman. And now this is exactly what you realize immediately that this kick is, uh, depends on the on the projection of, uh, of the, the difference of the k-vector of these two lasers along, uh, along the lattice. And so it's, uh, it's equivalent to have a constant flux. So very, sim very easily, one, uh, almost for free, one is uh, achieving this uh, constant magnetic flux. And also, just because we have a finite number of internal state, we achieve uh, uh, sharp boundaries. So it's an ideal system to observe edge state. OK, so now, briefly, how this, uh, we can really speak of edge state, how this edge state come around. So this has just three, three sides. I can go, can change gauge. I can go and uh, get translational invariant and diagonalize a three by three Hamiltonian. So I can speak of uh, edge state. But if you look, if I'm in the limit in which this uh, transversal coupling or this Raman coupling is, is relatively weak, I see that. So normally, what I would do, if I had no coupling, I would have just three cosines that are shift one another by the, the flux. But now, if I couple them, I open up a gap, a gap between them. But if I'm far away from, uh, from the crossing, this avoided crossing, the, the color that represents the spin remain more or less uh, untouched. So it means that. You see, we can achieve a situation in which we have a gap, and we have state that lives in this gap, have almost linear dispersion relation. 
and, uh, and well-defined spin. So these are a good prototype of uh, edge state. Indeed, we test that uh, here that uh, these are a good transmission property. But this has been tested also in the experiment. So one of the first experimental realization was uh, at NIST uh, with uh, Jan Spielman group with rubidium. Indeed, they observed the, the skipping orbit and the chirality so that one one uh, spin state on one species is going uh, on one side, we see from the dispersion relation, and the other is propagating uh, in the opposite direction. And also the other experiment, this was uh, at Lens with fermion, and also Marcello and uh, Peter Zoller were involved in theory. And uh, here, the system is slightly different in the sense that they use different spin state. This uh, atom, as we learned yesterday, has six internal states. But again, the, the similar chiral behavior of the side state was uh, clear observed. OK, then the, when very recently also this has been started to, the, to clock state. So this is, uh, similar behavior can be, as we will see, also seen in, the, in ladder. And this experiment with internal lens and uh, agila. OK, fine. So maybe. Uh, yes, or maybe not, I convince you that even in a very narrow system, we, we, it's licit to, to speak about edge states, in the sense that these have uh, the good property to be associated to a state in this uh, weak limit, but what about the bulk? So this I, it's a state that has just three internal states, so our bulk would be just one side. So is uh, this meaningful? So one. It's even hard to understand how to attack this problem because it's uh, really the general question would be how big should be a strip to see some uh, topological feature, and uh, if we are we have edge state, then we said that is this uh, open closed boundary correspondence, so that the property of the edge state should be related to the property of the bike of the band to the churn number. So, is the churn number somehow defined? Can we measure it in which sense? So. The practical way of doing it, it's uh, so what we consider in this paper that appeared in August in, uh, in Cyprus, was published in August in Cyprus, this new, new journal that is uh, Scientists for Scientists. Uh, so it's, uh, we took a pragmatic approach. And uh, so what we measured, we wanted to see if uh, in this system we can establish a laughing pump. So we can uh, apply in the force if we can uh, see a displacement of charge that is related to the, to the churn number. And in this can work also in the small system. So this was, uh, it's related also to the Taulas pump that uh, was uh, discussed by Michael in this talk. So consider the now step uh, behind. So consider a more typical situation, a safe situation in which we have a large periodic system, which we can have a, a well-defined Birland zone. And we can, suppose we can prepare in the lowest band a state that is well localized in, uh, in the transversal direction that I call y, and, uh, and well spread in the, in the standard direction that is in the large direction that is x. In this case, even it's not, there is no distinction between large or small, but uh, will be afterwards. And now, so we have this state. And now suppose that uh, we apply a, a force along x. So semi-classically, we expect that this weight packet will accelerate. We start spanning our brilliant zone. So if we wait a block oscillation, this state will uh, cover the full brilliant zone and will and, uh, we'll come back. So what happened in this case is that if there is some uh, uh, topology here, there will be an, uh, an anomalous velocity that will drift the center of mass in position of this state. OK, so this is the, the sketch, how this would be in formula. So again, so we would have this is uh, applying the, tauless, the famous Taules argument. So we will have the semi-classical equation of motion. We will have the, the momentum that is uh, growing linearly with the, the force, and now as Lucas said, the group velocity depends on the dispersion relation, but when we are in a topological system, there is also an anomalous contribution that is due to the force. This is just really Lorentz force in the Brillouin zone. This would be the interpretation of, of this curvature. And if we have a weight packet of the kind I said before, so very, very localized in, uh, in, um, in momentum in long x, 
essentially this uh, doing the pump along uh, a, a period, so the time in which we span the, the, the Brillouin zone in X is exactly equal to integrate the expectation value of uh, this velocity averaging it on the Brillouin zone. And this means that this guy disappears as if the band would be full. And in the end, the only contribution we have is we have the integral of the curvature that by definition is the shell number. So it means that if we, if we just measure the center of mass displacement, what we observe is that this will be transversal, as we expect. This is quantum mole, so the current is transversal to the force, and will be exactly of the quantity that is proportional to the cell number. And now, the point is that this kind of state I present you that has this shape, it's, uh, it's uh, very easy to prepare if we are in, uh, in a limit in which the, the coupling along y, it's, uh, so the state has, are well decoupled, so we can prepare a well, uh, easily a well-defined speed. So in the limit in which this is zero, we'd be just having, uh, in this synthetic idea, just having uh, a condensate that is not coupled. And also what uh, we show in a minute is that, that this indeed is applicable also to a strip, so a system that has boundary, until we don't touch the band. So the deformation that is produced by the boundary is only seen when you are really close to the band. So let's see how this applies to our system. So let's take again this uh, three, three internal state. So ideally, if we start without coupling, we have this situation in which we have just these three bands that are displaced. And preparing a well-defined, uh, so localize the system in, uh, in Y means that we localize it in spin and means that we put it at the minimum of the dispersion relation. Now, consider that we turn on just a bit the, the Raman coupling, so the situation becomes this. You see we have this avoided crossing the opening here, but as the color, as seen from the color, apart the, the crossing, if the coupling is weak, the color remains well-defined. So in the minimum, more or less, we are still, the condensate is still occupying the, as a well-defined spin. So it's still occupying a well-defined site in the synthetic dimension. Now what is doing this, uh, this pumping we, we are saying? So this is really, in a, in, a, in a period, in the period we consider it just the movement from one minima to another. So if we move from one minima to another, in this approximation in which the, the center of mass it's really the, the average spin is really well defined. This is really an integer. So essentially, the interpretation here is that the sham number is just this, uh, the, the number of spin you have to jump when you move from one minima to another. Indeed, if you go back in the article of uh, the, femina, the seminal article of Tolles, this, they consider exactly this, also this very weak limit and observe that indeed the churn number can be related to the solution of the Diophantine equations. It sounds complicated, but the Diophantine equation is exactly what you ask if you want essentially the minimum here is that the cosine, if the argument of cosine is a multiple of 2 pi, so you want to know if the, as this, uh, this minimum of cosine will be just the momentum shift by uh, the spin for, for, uh, for the flux, essentially this is really related to, to the value of the flux. So let's consider in, in this case what I consider specifically is a flux that is a rational flux, because as I said, the, okay, maybe I didn't say it, but the, to have a Nostrader spectrum we need a, a rational flux, so this is the simplest, uh, one of the simplest we can imagine. So just one third of the total unit. And in this case, we see that with the relatively weaker coupling in the weather direction, the pumping is working very well. This is, would be the trajectory of the center of mass in X that you are not so interested about. But what is really relevant is the center of mass in Y. So while we do the, the pumping after a cycle, we move to one. Then when we are here, what happened? Essentially, now we see that we have this this one that was the edge state, so this is periodic, so this is pumping up essentially to the, to the second band. And now we start pumping in the second band, and we see that in the second band, and this is well known, that in the lowest band the churn number is one, so we display it by one, but in the second band is minus two for these values of the flux, so essentially we go back, and then when we read again, when we cover all this band, we are pumped up to, to the higher band, 
And again, this is uh, churn number one. And when we cover after a nine step, we cover all the all the all the spectrum, all the bands, and we are back on uh, on, uh, on the original sites. Okay. So what is uh, quite impressive is that the prediction one is getting uh, doing evolution is uh, almost really for an ideal system that is infinite in the x direction is, is almost one. It's 90, 99 or 90 or a point, uh, point 0.98. Okay. So the natural question is why this is working so well. So again, the crucial point is that this this gap, as I said. It's, it's swapping linearly, but the mixing in, uh, in the spin state is quadratic. And indeed, what we verify is that the, the degradation of our measurement, it just depends if we assume that we are able to be always sufficiently adiabatic. So this means that, this means that uh, one should be very slow compared with this gap. Otherwise, we are, uh, we, are, we are going to the higher band, and we don't follow the lower band. So if we are in this regime, really, the, the measurement is just affected by the spread of the center of mass. And this is going quadratic, essentially, because this is just a simple perturbation theory. OK. So this is for, uh, for uh, the simplest case. So you may say, OK, this is uh, equal 1. But in principle, the same argument would work for, any, for also an higher chain number. And if we are in the lower band, what we ask is uh, that the number of, what we ask is that we don't want to be pumped from one edge state to another edge state. So we ask essentially to have two additional, two additional sites. So we test also for other flux and a bigger system. And uh, this is more for the SPER. So uh, curiously, even the, this pumping is working back the, the, the Fukui Atsugai Suzuki algorithm that is a very efficient algorithm for computing numerically the churn number in the Brillouin zone. And for, exim for example, for this value of the flux that give uh, churn number minus two, the, the algorithm and the, the pumping give the same prediction until uh, a number of uh, spin state or, uh, or the transversal uh, state of five, but when we go to four, we can still perform, perform the pump, so we can choose a well-defined minimum, which we can move uh, in the lowest band and uh, observe the displacement of minus two while the, the, the algorithm breaks down. So what we test also in this paper is that this system, as should be, it's uh, robust to disorder. What does it mean? Obviously, robust to disorder that uh, have a magnitude that is less of this gap, that is tiny. This is important. And also, we put also an harmonic confinement. This is what is giving you. is giving you a lower bound on the force that you can apply. This means, essentially, that also is telling you that you cannot be as, uh, as small as you want in, in the coupling in the, in the synthetic dimension. But still, we, we see that uh, we can still get there is room for experiment to get a good number and work in the, in the right regime. Now, what happened with interaction? So one may be able to say the gap is small, so the, this should break down. But indeed, the one can, uh, we will see later that there are adiabatic arguments that connect this, uh, the physics in these strips. And this has been studied also by people here, by Marcello to, and uh, Rosario for, uh, for, uh, for considering the, um, how connecting to laughing like state. So also in this case, and this pre perhaps there is more to study in this, uh, in this contest, we can still uh, find, uh, find uh, a, pre a precise connection between the topology of the small system and the large system also with interaction. And uh, in addition, again, here from, uh, from uh, Trieste, and we show that this kind of uh, narrow of the steep, but also a symmetry protected 1D topology that is not the one considered here. In a sense, this, is, uh, this topology here is an inheritance of the, the one of the two big system. But it's quite interesting that this kind of system have also edge bound state that appear now at the uh, extreme. And this uh, appeared in uh, on August. OK, so how much time I have uh, left? Five, six. Yeah. This, uh, OK, so uh, we'll be, I'll try to give you a sketch. So what happened now? It's very interesting what happened when we have, we have interaction. 
Okay, this is uh, this synthetic lattice seems a promis, uh, promising route. Uh, not eating in principle is expected. There is a peculiarity that is quite obvious: the the, um, the interaction in the synthetic dimensional range. This is a uh, gives quite a nice new feature. And conceptually, there's uh, also not only a practical, but also a theoretical uh, tool to connect uh, what happened, in a sense, why, why, when a 1D system become 2D. So this is, uh, I'm doing a, a lot of study, and uh, also a lot of your interest. And here, what to present you the effect of the demerization. So let me tell you that already if one is going on a ladder, there is quite interesting physics. So it was uh, discovered or uh, pointed out long ago that even just uh, this uh, two-level system has a nice analogy with a type two superconductor. Uh, why? Because, okay, you have, a, you have a flux, and you can have, depending on how is this transfer coupling, and now I call J perpendicular, you have two situations. So if this coupling is sufficiently strong, you see that in the, you just uh, compute the diagonalize the two by two Hamiltonian, you see that there is a, a minimum in the center. And this is essentially the analogous of, uh, of a Meissner phase. So the only thing that happened that you have circulation on, on the edge. And the, and the magnetic flux essentially is not able to, to pierce, the, is repelled by the, the superconductor. Now, if you increase the flux, keeping this uh, transfer uh, coupling, you see that at a certain point, the, the minimum split. And the, the situation that has to minimum is associated to the fact that uh, current inside uh, appear. And this current slow let pass some, uh, so in the analogy is that in the type two, what happens is that if the flux is too high, vortices start appear in the system and let pass part of the of the, of, the, of the magnetic field. So there are part of the system that become, become uh, uh, remain superconducting, but other part that are a normal conductor. And this is signaled by the presence of the current along, along the, the rung of, the, of this, uh, this ladder. And this has also been observed in the experiment, in real ladder experiment in the in block group. OK. So, what happens is one is uh, putting interaction. Very briefly, normal interaction would try to stabilize the Meissner phase, so reduce this uh, effect of the Meissner. And also was shown that in the synthetic ladder, uh, lattice, this is even more extreme because somehow we have this interaction that is more because we have also interaction on the rank. But still, there are more phase uh, visible if we go out of the alcohol limit. Now, what we, we wanted to, to see is that if there is another way to favor this, uh, this vortex, and uh, one possible thing is demerizing the lattice. So what does it mean, demerizing the lattice? So suppose that you, instead of having just a normal uh, optical lattice, you, you, have, uh, you do a bichromatic one in which essentially create a situation in which you have a strong link and, can, and a weak link, so that in one, one the tunneling is higher and the other is weaker. So you see that the fact that you disconnect, uh, if you put this uh, coupling to zero, you disconnect uh, in plaquettes. And this already tell you that it's like having an isolated uh, Meissner region separated by, by a vortex region. And when you turn on the coupling, you would expect that somehow this, uh, this vortex, if you have interaction, should melt. OK. But this, the next thing is that uh, the, the physics is interesting also without interaction. Because, OK, this, uh, first of all, how it looks like. This was the original system. Now I demerize. So essentially, I should fold uh, the mad band structure. This I just changed the way in which I'm picturing it in the restricted billion zone. But if I demerize it, uh, OK, this I just rescale. If I demerize it, what is doing the demerization? Opening this gap here. But now it's also separating these two minima. So you, we see that this naive expectation is confirmed, so that this vortex phase is enhanced because we, well, the minima are more separated, so we, we get more far from the Meissner phase. And uh, this can be quantified within really looking at the, at the reverse of the chiral current. So the Meissner phase, as you expect, what does it mean? It means that uh, if you have a Meissner phase, you're applying a flux that is increasing, you expect that the current on the border is increasing. 
on the boundary of the system, so along the legs. So the cardinal current is just the difference between the, the current that is going on one edge and the current that is going on the other edge. So they are opposite sign because they are cardinal, so they are that. But so this is increasing, and then they're reaching the maximum when the minima start to split, and we enter in the vortex phase and they start decreasing. And this is the behavior in the uniform ladder. Now, what happens if uh, this is uh, easy and a tricky analytical result, but can be done anything analytical? So if we put the, the, the coupling, we see that again, we enter in the, this uh, vortex phase at a certain point. And also, we observe that the more we demerize, more the vortex phase shrink. But then we see that there is also this, uh, this uh, unexpected a priori behavior in which the, the current is not only decreasing, but is changing sign. So it's going in the other way around. That is increasing again. So we have a new diamagnetic region in which this is positive. The metamagnetic region would be, would be here even. And then that where there is vortex, so this is a bit more really like a, a superconductor, and then it's decreasing again. And so this confirm also the, with the current behavior confirm that uh, this vortex phase is enhanced. So just flashing you what happened when we have interaction. So we we did essentially uh, both analytical and numerical studies. So the the obvious analytic <laughs> study you can do you can start when you disconnect really the lattice and you have just a disconnect plaquette and you do perturbation theory. So you start looking at the spectrum. You can derive from it, uh, if you do perturbation theory, an effect uh, XX model. That, uh, but already from the spectrum, you understand that if the coupling is too big, you have just a bend insulator. Because you are in the, in the, in the situation in which you have just two, two atoms uh, per plaquette, and they cannot uh, overcome one another. So the system is not conducting. But if you decrease the, the coupling, you get in a phase in which you have just one atom in this plaquette that is circulating with the flux, and this is the, the in that you, you have a vortex phase. Actually, the, the vortex appear in the, in the weak plaquette, if you like. And this indeed what uh, is observed also with the MRG, that if we start in the situation in which uh, we fine tune to have at uh, zero flux just these two states degenerate, we see that we enter at zero flux, we enter immediately in, the, in this uh, vortex region. So the, the, both the, the energy and the density decrease. If we have uh, more flux, this is getting a bit more because this uh, vortex uh, is, uh, is more, more energetic. And the, the, the behavior close here can be indeed uh, is, is, uh, explained by, by the, um, the perturbation theory. And uh, the main result would be that also not only this, but we can show that by the minimization we can see clearly sign of the incommensurate, incommensurate phase transition. And this can be signed for this in, in an observable quantity like the, the density, the one, the one body density matrix, so the, the density of state, uh, the number of particles is momentum average on the two legs. And the transition is just this change in behavior from this smooth uh, Lorentzian uh, distribution to a peak one. This has been observed also, sorry. This has been observed also by other people, for example, uh, Orignac uh, and uh, Roberto Citro and uh, here, here in Trieste, Stefania De Palo, but uh, with finite interaction. So here, this feature seems more robust and, and also it's quite robust to, to trap. So as I have no time, there are future steps, obviously going out of the Arcor, uh, Arcor uh, boson and see if the, this uh, demerized lattice can be, can be used also to uh, make more visible uh, sign of a laughing like state. So this was just a summary of, uh, of uh, what I tell you. So this is what uh, they all work. We, have, we can have a synthetic state that's been observed uh, in, in experiment, but also bulk topology can be observed. And then if we go in, uh, with interaction, the effect of demerization could be a very nice tool to be studied. And this is uh, some possible direction. But let me just conclude uh, thanking the, the collaborators. So this start in, uh, in Barcelona when I was still at uh, TUB with uh, Cosenia Silatorre, Ottavi Boada, who was the student uh, who supervised, and Macha Clevestein. 
uh, I moved to ICFO and, uh, to be as we work with, uh, with what happened when we put interaction in the, in, but without flux. Then with uh, the, these people, we studied the, the case of the synthetic, uh, how you get uh, F-state in, uh, in these synthetic lattices. And then uh, we study also uh, non-trivial topology. I would do an obvious trip, which I didn't say about it. Then uh, more and more. And uh, very recently, OK, also Leticia and uh, Alexandre joined for understanding this, um, this, uh, this topological property. And in the last work that is has to appear, uh, Manuel is the driving force, is the guy that is doing the MRG. And uh, Robert is. Uh, we, we learn from her a bit more about this uh, interacting ladder and also an analytical method in, uh, in this system. And here there is still space, so if you want to join, you're welcome. Thanks a lot. <laughs>